Hey guys, I do myself here. Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be taking a look at iOS 14 developer beta 1. Of course, today Apple at WWDC announced the first beta for iOS 14 for registered developers. In this video, I'm going to give you a breakdown on some of the latest and awesome features with the latest beta for iOS 14, which by the way, the bill number, here it is, 18A5301. V. That's going to be the first bill number. Now, it's almost impossible to cover everything in one video. I'm going to be filming a few videos throughout the week, so make sure to stay tuned here to the channel. Subscribe, click that notification bell so you get all your notifications for the latest iOS 14. In this video, I'm going to give you a breakdown of some of the best features that Apple brought to the platform with iOS 14. Now, we want to start off with device support. Now, I'm extremely excited to say that Apple supports every single device from iOS 13 with iOS 14. Now, I myself thought Apple will drop the iPhone SE first generation, iPhone 6S, 6S Plus. That was not the case. I'm so happy to be wrong this time around. Apple supports every single device that's running iOS 13 now will be able to run iOS 14. And boy, there's a lot of changes in here, a ton of amazing new features. As I mentioned, stay tuned here to the channel because there's going to be a lot of coverage here. I'm going to be covering watchOS as well as iPadOS 14. So let's dive right in. First, I know you guys are going to be asking when will iOS 14 will be released to everyone worldwide? Well, if history is any indication is that Apple has mentioned on their keynote, iOS 14 will be released to everyone worldwide on the September and October time frame, right when the new iPhones get released, just like every year. So the fall season is when Apple will be releasing iOS 14. Now developers get beta one today, public beta testers. If you want to try out that, links will be in the description. You will get the first beta by mid July. However, if you want to venture and go ahead and risk it and try iOS 14 now without a developer account, without having to pay the $100 or without having to be a public or developer uh, tester, you can go ahead and check out the links in the description because I have a video on how to install it right now. So you can check that out down below as well. So first, let's talk about some of the UI changes. First, let's head on over to wallpapers because I know how much you guys really enjoy wallpapers. Let's head on over to the wallpapers categories here and show you some of the latest wallpapers available for iOS 14. So we have three wallpapers here at the top. We have this one here, and of course I'm rocking the dark mode version of it, but if we go ahead and remove the dark mode here quickly, it's gonna show you what those look like. There we go. So let's go back here. Now, of course, this is a bit glitchy now because it is beta one and you see that some of the things won't work as intended, but that is to be expected. That's the second one there. And that is the third wallpaper there. And these are transition wallpapers. So what I mean by that is that the uh, iPhone would automatically change the color if you go into dark mode for those wallpapers as the day progresses. Of course, that is nothing new. That's in iOS 13 as well, but iOS 14 just brought additional wallpapers that will give you the ability to do that. Now, one of my favorite new features for iOS 14 is picture within picture. I don't know how long we've been waiting for this one, but for those of you that don't know, this means you can watch a video clip while you're browsing through the OS. So for example, let's say I wanna watch Apple's keynote here, and I'm in the Apple uh, TV application. You see this new button on the top that appears here? That is the picture within picture button, and that brings the actual video to the forefront there as I'm using my iPhone. Now the great thing is, is that the audio will continue playing even if you hide it off to the side. So there it is. Now this is extremely similar to what we see with jailbreak tweaks, but there it is. The keynote is playing. I can launch applications. The video will stay in the forefront. I can move it around the screen just like so. It is actually really, really cool. If you tap it, you get your controls here to go back. You can also zoom with two fingers just like that or make it smaller just by doing this here, just like so. Now, if you wanna go back, as I mentioned, just click on the button there and it brings you back to the actual application with the video source. Now, this isn't working with YouTube as of yet, but I'm sure this will work with other video platforms in the future as well. Next, I wanna talk about widgets. And yes, there's widgets for iPhone, not only on the widget panel, but also on the home screen. And we'll get to some of the details of the widgets on the home screen here shortly. But let's break down the widget panel here. You have your search bar here up at the top, of course, just like before. You have your widgets here. We have a ton of new widgets that we did not have before. And the way you edit these is you simply tap and hold, and you can bring up here the menu to edit a particular widget itself or you can actually remove it or edit the actual screen. So here we go. This is the menu we have done and plus. So once we go into edit mode here, 
we can add of course and remove widgets by simply tapping into here you'll see all the widgets and third-party widgets will also be supported in the future but you have uh, some widgets here for the battery your calendar widgets a fitness application and so on you can add it just like so and you'll see the widget appear right there on your widget panel now let's say you want a stack of widgets right so multiple widgets at once and this is one of my favorite features of the new widgets this is a stack widget here I have photos the weather calendar news uh, notes etc music all these widgets to stack on top of each other the great thing about stacked widgets is that you can edit stack widgets themselves so if you have a stacked widget you can go ahead and edit stack and you can select how many widgets you want in that particular stack once you're done of course you can flip it away and you'll have your stack of widgets just like that now you can also add of course separate widgets here and another great thing is that you can add the widgets to the actual home screen of your iPhone as well. So if we go into edit mode, just like we do when we go to remove an application from the home screen, we can tap on the plus button that appears here. Some devices have it on the top right. And uh, you can go ahead and press and hold and just bring that widget to the home screen just like that. So there it is. That is the stack widget right in the center of my iPhone. There it is. It looks amazing in my opinion. Click done. And now you have the widget right there on the home screen of your iPhone. Now you have multiple widgets to choose from, a lot of widgets that are available right now. So let's go ahead and remove this one here, remove this stack, and let's go into edit mode here. And let's select another widget here. So go to edit home screen, go to the plus, and you see you can add an activity widget, location, notes, a smart stack, battery, just a ton of awesome widgets that you can choose from here to have on your home screen. Of course, you can search the widgets themselves as well. Next, I want to talk about iMessage. iMessage did receive a few updates and I wanted to go ahead and break them down here. Now for group messages as well as messages uh, threads, you have the ability to now swipe to the left and pin a conversation to the top of the messages. So you can stay in touch with that one. It never goes all the way down the list. So you don't have to search for it. So it's also staying up at the top here. Now I've been talking to a few fellow YouTubers here trying to software out. Y'all have mentioned. So if you want to go ahead and call someone's attention in a group chat you can mention so as you see here Aaron from solo tech has called my attention here just testing the software I said you know it's looking good it's working good so this can actually also be used to reply to a specific uh, person in a group chat so if I select Brandon here you see tap and hold I can reply directly to Brandon here from YouTube channel as well by the way if you want to check it out great content link in the description as well as for Aaron from solo tech great great content iOS content check them out so there it is I can reply Reply directly to that uh, message right there and uh, I can go ahead and reply directly to Brandon if I wish to do so and again direct replies and mentions are a thing there's also additional features that could be added in the future such as retract messages so if you send a message you can delete it later but we'll have to wait and see what Apple will do with that now you also have a specific me emoji uh, right there icon so you can go ahead and set up a me emoji as well next i want to talk about siri because siri did get a much needed update it is now unintrusive it is the way it should have been from the beginning of course you can hold a side button to invoke it or use the custom command there it is the new ui and if you have this switch here the mute switch on siri will not talk to you back but she will still reply however if you don't have the mute switch on she would just uh, answer your questions by replying with her voice so let's go ahead and say hello there there it is. Now, if I have the mute switch on, it would say hello. Hello there. But you see the answer, but it won't go and uh, answer to you using her voice because the mute switch is on. So, yes, yeah, Siri, much needed update. Cleaner UI at the bottom of the screen. Unintrusive. There it is. Something that we were all looking forward to. Next up, I want to talk about something that's really, really cool, and that is the new sleep mode. Now, this is also coming to Watch OS, which I'll be covering in the future, of course, as well as iPad OS. So stay tuned for that. Now, that now relies in the health application, but you can also edit it using the actual clocks application. So at the top here, you see sleep time or sleep mode. There it is. You can set a schedule. You can also use third party applications for different other options, additional options. We click on edit here. I've already set it up, but let me go ahead and set it up so you guys can see. You have uh, by day. You also have the schedule here where you can move this here and say, I want to go to bed at, uh, let's say, 10 p.m. and wake up every day at 6 30 a.m. There it is. I will sleep eight and a half hours. And then you have uh, the ability to change the alarms of course different options and you can add this here and it will walk you through uh, the process 
on how you can also enable the option to wind down, which is 30, 30 minutes in my uh, options here, to wind down before you go to bed. And this will turn on do not disturb before you go to bed. And then wind down shortcuts if you want to add a shortcut for that. And there it is. Apple really went above and beyond with sleep mode. I'll do an entire uh, in-depth video on this one. It's just a lot to talk about on that one. But sleep mode, an awesome feature available for iOS 14 again with a watch OS 7 as well. Next, I want to talk about the app library. Now, this one is on the far right side when all your app pages are done. So if we swipe to the left, now you have the app library. Of course, you can search any application in here, but you also have some presets right here, suggested. We also have recent applications and you can open these folders right here. You have all of your recents. It'll categorize everything on its own. So you have productivity right here. You see all these apps in here, social media, right there it is in all these categories you can edit them as well so you can remove and add applications as you wish and it's just a great way to organize all of your uh, apps and app pages uh, right here with the app library options which I think I have to play around with a lot because there's just a whole lot that's happening there but yeah app library is something new coming with iOS 14 I think it looks great I think it's nice it's organized it looks nice so we'll have to wait and see how this breaks down in the near future another thing I also want to talk about is editing the home screen in iOS 14 because you can now edit the home screen differently you see here at the bottom you now have this highlighted section you can tap into here and this will bring up this brand new user interface you can actually hide entire pages from the home screen of your iPhone so if you unselect it and you go back to the home screen you no longer see those apps you still have your apps library here as we previously talked about but you now have the ability to actually hide entire apps or entire pages of applications of course you can bring these back by simply tagging right there and going back to the home screen and this will bring all the applications back but it is a great way to keep uh, certain app pages uh, just hidden from the view, right? Because you can simply just search your apps in this category here. It's, Apple is all about simplicity with iOS 14, and that's actually working. I really like what they're doing here. Now, last but not least, this is probably the number one most requested feature, my number one favorite UI enhancement and improvement, and that is the incoming call UI is finally been fixed in iOS 14. There it is, guys. It is not taking the entire display answer or decline or you can swipe it away and let it ring in the background thank you apple thank you for fixing this one so the incoming call ui has definitely been addressed with ios 14 now i think it needs a little bit of work but apple is headed in the right direction i'm happy to see that they did this there it is the new call ui isn't applied within the home screen or the lock screen i should say it still isn't applied within the lock screen but it is there we see that the new call ui once you unlock your iphone you have the ability to actually dismiss the call non-intrusive the way it should have been apple is really addressing most of the users concerns most of the clunkiness of ios and of course guys this is just the tip of the iceberg there's just so many hitting features and changes and more features that i want to go more in depth about once i learn how to use them and apple continues to update the software with different betas i want to go ahead and continue talking because one feature here translate which allows you to in real time translate many languages even without having an internet connection is still kind of clunky and it's not working properly for me but i want to go in depth on that but yeah there's just so much going on here guys which i'll be covering in the next couple of days and as i mentioned as apple continues to release new beta software then of course i'll be adding additional features of videos for additional features in depth separately so stay tuned here to the channel apple is headed in the right direction ios 14 so far loving it not that many hiccups as i thought it would be at first but there's still a lot of course of progress to be done here but apple's headed in the right direction thank you for watching stay tuned for ipad os videos watch os 7 videos and much more here on the channel have a great day guys i'll see you real soon peace